So hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to cover chapter 12, section 4. Uh, we're going to talk about mutations and they're going to go in your interactive notebook from pages 36 through 38. Um, make sure that you pause the video at this point and please make sure you uh, write the title of this on every page along with the date on every every single one of these pages. So pages page 36 should have this title and the date. Uh, page 37 should have this title and the date and page 38 should have the title and the date. So make sure that you fill this in and pause the video so you could form, format your paper. So uh, what kinds of things cause mutations? So um, what is a mutation first? Uh, first, a mutation is any kind of change in genetic material. So in other words, uh, what kind of change, uh, any change that can occur to your DNA. Uh, remember, your DNA is safeguarded by two membranes, uh, basically three membranes. Uh, you've got the, the cell membrane that is the big, um, it's semi-permeable, it allows certain things in and out, but mostly it tries to keep out things, especially those that will damage uh, genetic material. Uh, the second barrier would be your uh, nuclear membrane, and then uh, you that is also semi-permeable. It has um, uh, two layers, and it basically allows things to come in and out, but definitely not the DNA. The DNA is safeguarded within the nucleus, uh, and in, in, then that's pretty much in eukaryotes. Prokaryotes don't have that guard, and that's why we see bacteria mutate a whole lot, because they don't have the double guards, and a lot of their DNA can change rapidly, uh, whereas ours, it doesn't mutate that often, and uh, that's actually a good thing, because most mutations uh, cause severe, severe problems in humans, as well as other animals, and we've seen it in nature, and we see it in humans also. So, mutations are any changes in genetic material. Uh, the most common uh, uh, mutations we see cause cancer, so that would be horrible. Okay, uh, mutations are caused. Uh, what what actually causes these mutations? Environmental factors such as UV light, chemicals, and radiation. So uh, basically, um, anything that has a label that may cause cancer uh, is what causes mutations. Cigarette smoke, um, and not just smoking cigarettes, but also breathing that smoke in, uh, causes mutations usually in the respiratory system. Um, and uh, UV light, skin cancer, chemicals such as like gasoline fumes, um, straight radiation from radioactive um, particles you've been around, uh, and also mistakes in cell division, which is the most common form of um, cancer that just appears when you haven't been uh, around environmental factors that cause um, mutations. Generally, cancer is also caused sometimes by div uh, mistakes in cell division. So mutations, 90 eight night to to nearly a hundred percent of the time in humans as well as many animals um, are caused by either environmental factors or mistakes in cell division so here you have an example of uh, what a normal dna sequence uh, should look like the c should bind, be binding with the g and the g with the c and the t with the a normal sequence and then you have the not so um, good DNA that the mistake has happened and this mistake is deadly. So you see here that that is not a good thing. Lots of skeletons and not a good thing. So we have found uh, several types of mutations. There are some. Uh, there are a few others than we're gonna, than these three, but we we've we're going to discuss three different types of mutations that we find most commonly and that we found that cause many of the mutations that we see that cause disease in humans. Okay, so um, there's point mutations. Uh, they change in one or mu more nucleotides. So there's um, the type of mutations that sometimes we see at, at a single point. So that means in a single place on a chromosome, there's been some kind of change. So the kind of changes we can have at a single point are called deletions. So the deletion is like when you hit delete on the keyboard or backspace, it's basically you delete something. So one or more bases, nucleotides, are actually erased. Okay, that's the first type of point mutation. The second type of point mutation is called an insertion. So when you insert something, you're adding something that shouldn't be there. So one or more bases are added to where they don't belong. So you wind up with an extra long chromosome that has extra DNA that shouldn't be there. So when you have extra DNA that shouldn't be there, one or two nucleotides that should not be there, it, it causes a tremendous change. The third type of point mutation is called a substitution. And as you can guess, uh, basically, 
basically you put one in for another one. So maybe instead of a C, you put in a G and that uh, that causes a problem or a G, an A instead of a G or a C or any of those uh, adenine, thymine, guanine or cytosine actually being replaced by another one that shouldn't be there. That would be called, that would um, be uh, the third type of point mutation. And um, the two top ones are the most problematic because they cause what's called a frame shift. Um, both deletion and insertions cause frame shift mutations because bases are read in triplets and be, once you're reading in threes, if you if you if if we know we, that the ribosome reads in threes to make the protein, if you just change one, it'll read the wrong three. So um, like uh, the the man ran um if you change like add something like in in between the word the like a c between t and h and you're reading in threes it's going to throw off the entire sentence um or if you delete the h from the word the and you have to read in threes it throws off the entire sentence and those generally deletions and insertions are usually the really bad ones because they tend to uh get, basically create proteins that are trash that don't work for you as opposed to substitution that if you just change one and to change it for the other ones it doesn't change the reading frame so the ribosome will still may not read that one amino acid right but the rest of the amino acids are going to be put in order so you're going to be fine so deletion um original you see here t-a-c-c-a-t-t-g-c-a-c -C -A -T -T uh the rna is going to be a-u-g g-g-u a-a-c G U G, and if you use that little circle on page 303, you would find out that A U G gives you methionine, then then gly glycine, and then aspergine for A A C, and then G U G codes for valine. Okay, so basically the underlined, if you delete the underlined T, um, so you see uh, the underlined T, you wind up with the wrong. Um, the first one methionine doesn't get changed. The glycine doesn't get changed, but then you've got thorine, and then it's not asparagine, so it's a wrong amino acid. And then the last two get are not right. There's not three, so the ribosome won't put any amino acid there. So that protein will be completely short. It will be one amino acid short, and to the top it all off, one of the three amino acids that make up the protein now is the wrong one. So that protein will be completely wrong and not serve what. Um, not do what it's supposed to be doing. So, and this is a problem with the DNA that has nothing to do with the RNA. Everything's working great, except that the DNA is wrong. So now your proteins are made wrong and that particular, this particular protein would not serve you at all. So this is just like a problem with that uh, deletion. If you even delete one base. So now we're going to talk about insertion. Uh, so we've got the exact same uh, original DNA, original RNA, and original protein. So that would be when there is no problem. Now, if you add, let's say, a C between the seventh and eighth place of the original DNA, you wind up with a mutated DNA that's shown down here, T-A-C-C-C-A-T-C-T-G-C-A, and then that overhanging C, that's not a triplet. So we've got a problem there. Uh, so now we've got the resulting mRNA is going to be a little bit wrong. And then you've got methionine still fine, glycine still fine. Now you've got the wrong two, arginine on arginine instead of aspergine and valine. You've got the wrong two amino acids at the end, and then you don't get a third one. So you still have four amino acids. This protein is going to be long enough, but it's going to be completely wrong and will not do what your body needs it to do. So um, this is a, a problem also. So we see this problem in com commonly in humans where there there's an insertion point mutation, uh, and those are really um, not the good ones. So. Uh, here we go. Now we're going to talk about the third type of point mutation, which is called substitution. Okay, so here we go. The original uh, DNA strand, the, uh, the original mRNA, and then we've got our original protein. But now we're going to replace the C in the 10th place of the original DNA with a G. So then we have a mutated DNA of T-A-C-C-C-A-T-T-G. 
GGAC. And there we have the methionine, the glycine, the aspergine, and then you get the wrong ending amino acid leucine. In this case, the substitution was bad. Uh, it creates a protein that is wrong. So in this case, substitution is very is still like bad. But if sometimes you get lucky, and I'm going to show you in the next slide um, another example of when it does not create a junk protein. So let's take a look. So substitution example number two. Here we're going to have we have the original DNA, the original mRNA, and there you have the original protein at the top of the, plate, uh, the page. So um, you're going to place an A in the sixth place, replace that one with a G. So uh, for a G. So you're going to replace the A in the sixth place with a G. So you get the, the mutated strand being T-A-C-C-C-G, T-T-G. C A C, and then you get resulting mRNA that's a little bit different, but this mutation gives you exactly the same amino acids because guess what? Uh, T A C is still the same. C C A T T G C A C. Um, uh, the replacing the A with a G in the second. Um, guess what? G G C and G G U give you the same glycine. So in this case, because it, the, the chart, the, there is 64 different types of combinations of these letters or these nucleotides, and because there's only 20 amino acids, there's a lot of repeating of, of the combinations. So in, in other words, what happened here is that GGU and GGC give you glycine. So both of those, this was a fortunate mutation that didn't cause any damage whatsoever because in this case, the substitution gave you coded for exactly the same amino acid, even though the DNA is mutated. So in this case, whoever this, this DNA came from got dodged a bullet because they're, they have mutated DNA, but it's not causing any different uh, protein. So their proteins work just fine. So. Uh, here you've got a normal sequence that uh, let's try let's go over this just to clarify what we just went over in let's just use language it's because I think it does help people better understand what these uh, what this does because sometimes the looking at the sequence of DNA doesn't tell you much they're just like a T C G G G A that doesn't mean much but maybe in English it does so let's say the normal sentence the normal DNA would be the cat ate the rat okay great so here we've got the example of the deletion. Uh, here we're deleting the C from cat. Uh, so now we have to still read in three letters at a time. So we've got the atta tet her at. So we now have something that doesn't mean much. Uh, so all of a sudden we delete just one letter and we have to keep reading in three. You can see that shifting because there's one less. All of the other letters shifted over, but they're still in triplets. Uh, except the last one, you've got an overhanging AT that would create nothing, so that one doesn't work. So here you've got an example of a deletion. And okay, so the, the next example is insertion. So now what's happened here is that an E has been added before the word cat. So there is the E, <laughs> so the extra E. So it's got, it, now it's the ekat tat f erat t. So you could see that it's still wrong and it's substantially wrong if you're like a, if someone showed you that sentence you'd be like what uh, it doesn't make any sense is that really English because it doesn't make sense so you could see insertion and deletion if you're reading in frames of three it throws completely off um, finally substitution this would be like the uh, the substitution that would be bad because the C from cat was replaced with a C an R here you've got the rat ate the rat I mean it is possible but cannibalism but anyway uh, but in any case it doesn't say what it's supposed to say but you can see here that the eight and the, the the eight the rat is still fine so you still kind of it's still in English uh, at least um, it's the wrong thing but it's still in English so you kind of you don't it's it's something still wrong but it's not as devastating as an insertion or a deletion point mutations remember these are a way these are point mutations that we're talking about here okay so the effect of mutation can either be harmful uh that can cause many disorders such as like type 1 diabetes or um uh there's huntington's there's um 
ALD. There's several um, diseases that we know of that we call dis disorders because um, it's caused by the genetic makeup of the of the person and therefore um, will uh, be permanent. Uh, sometimes someone has a substitution which causes no effect. Uh, we went over why that is. And uh, very rarely we have beneficial effects. Sometimes we find people that have um, really strong immune systems, for example, uh, that never get sick. Uh, sometimes it's due, we find, we, and upon studying those uh, people, uh, we find that they actually have a, a particular mutation that allows them to um, uh, and not get sick very often. There's also um, mutations that, peop, uh, that, you know, that just differences that we see uh, that have caused the differences we see between people like having different colors hair or eyes or skin those we know that they uh, they originally came from a mutation if, for example if you have very um, um, create a lot of melanin you have really dark skin that is a beneficial type of mutation because you have um, a lot of protection from the sun or if you produce very little melanin you have a lot of you don't have a lot of protection from the sun so whether the mutation is to not produce a lot of melanin or to produce a lot of melanin either way um, you get a beneficial mutation for this for sun protection okay so at the bottom uh, which type of mutations do you think is the least harmful? Um, well, that one, I hope you got this, is it is a substitution. And which type of mutations do you think is the most harmful? Um, well, as far as point mutations, we've got deletions and insertions kind of leading the pack. Um, sometimes those substitutions are also bad, but never n because they do not do frame shift. Substitutions do not uh, shift the frame of the ribosome reading. So uh, substitutions tend to be less harmful, um, whereas deletions and insertions 100% of the time wind up being harmful. Okay, so this whole time we've been talking about the types of point mutations. The second type of mutations that we see in nature are called chromosomal mutations, and these are always bad. Basically, you're changing the structure of the chromosome. So uh, you have deletions of parts of the chromosome. You can delete parts of a chromosome. So like, for example, here you lose, if the chromosome has gene A, gene B, gene C, D, E, F, and G, let's say this chromosome is carrying uh, genes A through G. Uh, if you delete two of those genes, you've got a deletion, and that is horrible because you're actually deleting leading to whole genes and from that person. So they may not be able to create certain proteins and this is horrible. Um, these we see some in some of the larger, um, the, the more problematic diseases. And these are definitely many reasons why people um, are born with uh, really bad conditions that, where they can't live very long. Uh, the second type of mutation is uh, chromosomal mutation, not point mutation, chromosomal mutation is called inversion. And here you've got the original A through G, G the same gene as before, but now we're going to invert it. Uh, so that means that now instead of going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, these genes, uh, you wind up going A, B, E, D, C, F, G. So now if you, if you had, if one um, protein was going to be produced from uh, was using A, B, and C areas of the of of that chromosome to create a protein. Now it would try to use A, B, E and create like junk proteins. Um, this is um, not a very good thing to happen simply because you still have the information, but because it's misplaced and because of transcription and translation, um, this can also cause you to create a lot of proteins that are no good and that chromosome would basically not be able to do and provide the information to do a lot of things in the body. So um, inversion, not, not as bad as a deletion, but definitely bad changes. So uh, here we've got uh, chromosomal mutations that are caused by translocation. Translocation means that you've got chromosome A and chromosome B. Uh, the chromosome A would be the one that, let's say, right here is in gray dots, and the chromosome B here is the one in yellow. So each of them have their own genes, but what's happening here now is that part of the one from uh, the top chromosome gets cut off and put onto the other one. 
So basically they exchange information and this is really bad because there is order to our DNA. Chromosome 1 has certain information, chromosome 2 has certain information, 3 and so on. We have uh, 23 pairs of chromosome and each of them is supposed to have their own their information. And when you get them trading information like this, we get a lot of big problems. Um, and um, it, it basically creates a really um, a, well, bi very big problems in someone that's born with this. And the fi final type of chromosomal mutations uh, is called duplication. And in duplication, you get more than one copy of every of certain genes. Uh, um, certain parts of the chromosome get copied over and, and it creates a chromosome that is too big and that may not do the right thing. So extra copies of chromosomes are, are, are sections of chromosomes are really bad also. So you uh, duplication, in this case, it's not like a point mutation, but duplication of parts of a chromosome is also very, uh, creates, a, um, creates great problems also. So uh, are mutations passed on? A mutation can only be passed on in a person's, if a person's children, if it, if it is um, part of the testes or ovaries because it's where the sex cells form and males have sperm and females have eggs so if though you get the abnormality and uh, the problem exists in the sperm and egg cells and the testes or ovaries um, then it will be passed on and mutation on any other part of the body affects a person but not their children so if it doesn't affect your testes or ovaries depending on whether you're male or female this mutation will will be passed on to your children if it's there but if it's not if it, the mutation happens in your ear or in um somewhere else in the body then you don't have a problem that means well you may have a problem but your children won't Finally, take a few minutes to kind of make sure that you understand how to read this. And you see here the first letter, the second letter, and the third letter. You those are the codons, and then you get the anticodons in the in the inside boxes, and then it tell it gives you the first three letters of the amino acids that that codes for. So this is basically uh, a way to um, decipher the codes of life. Uh, so these are extremely helpful in trying to decipher things. I showed you two ways, a little round way of figuring out first letter, second letter, third letter. Here you got the first letter, second letter, third letter. You kind of figure that one out. Now at this point you should be thinking about making sure that you've got titles on every page of notes you took. You have to add questions and you have to put in a summary at the end and then go get the, the set of Cornell notes signed. Okay, uh, so uh, at this point, um, you, we are done with this chapter and you're going to have a chapter test. So make sure you study all of this. You're going to get all your worksheets back so you can study them as a study guide. Uh, we're going to correct all the worksheets that you've done. And um, you can use all the corrected worksheets as a study guide in order to help you with the test. And also make sure you get all your notes signed. All the sets of notes need a signature. The only way you get a signature is if you have questions and summaries and titles and dates on every page of notes. So make sure you've got all the sections and notes and you can get them signed uh, until the day of the test. Okay, see you later. Bye.